Welcome to Dubai, a fabulous city in its own right, and of course, one of the world's greatest tourist attractions. If there's anything to do, you can do it here. And it all comes big, the biggest aquarium in the world, the tallest building in the world. But today, Dubai belongs to the triathlete as we prepare for Challenge Dubai. There are champions from many of the challenge events around the world who've been enticed by the massive prize money here in Dubai. Raylott could fancy his chances. Hella Fredrickson is back to prove that she is one of the best athletes in the Gulf. There are challenge events in 20 different countries spanning every continent on the globe. With over 140 of the world's best triathletes and the wind and the waves, whoever wins this is going to deserve the $65,000 on offer today. I think it's a great place for a race, a uh, really great city. It's a really good field of athletes racing, uh, really good prize money as well, which is important for pro athletes too. It was exciting when they said that there would be this Triple Crown in the Middle East. Never, I've never raced or trained or traveled here at all, so for me um, it's a very, very positive experience. These races are very well organized. Um, Challenge did a great job, um, especially out here in the Middle East. It's kind of new territory for a triathlon, essentially. And there's a willingness to make the races that bit better than maybe than other parts of the world. We are really treated uh, amazingly well, and I wanted to come back and enjoy the fine motels and foods again. There's nothing to lose and everything to gain. And it's great to be able to sport Challenge. They, they put in a lot into triathlon um, and, and making a big difference to the pro sport. It's the first race of the season. I'm really excited to be here and I'm excited also to see how my legs are. If you win this race, um, it's, it's a huge accolade and it's you know, a big payday and, and a great start to the year, so it's, it's brilliant. Because it's such a strong field, one of the toughest fields I ever raced. There's so many good athletes out there and I reckon the guy who, who's winning on, on Friday is the guy who watched the whole season. The men's field here is, is I mean, top notch. These guys are all fighting for, for that $1 million purse, and there's probably 10 guys who, who on their day can win this race. They announced strong wins for the day of the race, and that might be pretty challenging, but uh, we'll see. And the run, I was running this morning on the course, and it's just flat and, and fast, so uh, I expect a very fast race. I like these kind of courses where it's, it's, it's fast on the bike, it's flat. Uh, and I like the, the weather here. It's going to be a great race and uh, it's such a great course for it. Uh, perfect conditions for a fast race. It's going to be a really great race with a lot of strength, power, stamina, tenacity. I've never seen it like, like that before. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural Challenge Dubai. The scene is set. And my goodness, you saw some of the world's best and they're all very, very excited to be racing here in Dubai. We should have a look at the course. Of course, the triathlon involving the swim first 1.9 kilometers. They've actually cut it down to a two loop race because of the windy conditions. Anti-clockwise from Jamaira Beach and back in, there'll be an Australian exit before they move on to the bike. 90 kilometers on the bike. In these windy conditions, it could be very tough indeed. And then, of course, the run. Two times 10.5 kilometers, a total of 21.1, half marathon distance. And now the 75 men, the pros, are ready to go. They'll be the first into the water. Who is it who'll make his mark early on? Everyone keen to get a decent start here in Dubai. Watch out for Javier Gomez. Watch out, of course, for Andy Potts, uh, an international swimmer from USA. He's very, very quick in the water. Certainly, he'll be up in that first group. Now, with these waves, sighting is going to be difficult. You're going to see each and every one of them lifting their heads much more regularly than you normally would do. And I think we might see one or two veering off east and west. 
Well, the pace, fast and furious, 1,900 metres. They're expected to do that in under 22 minutes, and that's in these rough conditions. We'll see if they can match that. We'll certainly get a good idea when they come through the halfway stage. The elite women or the pro women starting five minutes after the men. Here they are, lined up, ready to go. Helen Fredrickson, who, of course, won in Bahrain, at the end of last year, she's in the field, certainly one to watch. Jody Swallow and Leander Kaye from Great Britain both going in today. Well, a steady start, and uh, it's not often they have to run into waves of this size at the start of the race. Some who've done all their training in the pool over the winter, again, a struggle. Those who've been brave enough to be out in the sea will enjoy this because they'll know it gives them a big, big advantage. Well, the men coming back in towards the Australian exit and just uh, having a look, we've got Relart who started well, nice Reed, Kanama, Gomez is certainly in with that leading group, Andy Potts certainly is up there as well. It's a very short run transition and actually they're very close to the other athletes going out. They'll have to uh, just make sure they stay to their right hand side but the field nice and tightly packed. They'll be past each other before you know it and back out on that second loop. Still tight. The drafting effect not quite as uh, significant in these sort of conditions. And it is the six foot three man from Pennsylvania, Andy Potts, leading the way in the men's, in the women's. It's all about Lauren Brandon. My goodness, she's had a good swim. She's, uh, of course, a former swimmer as well, but she's left the rest of the field behind. And there aren't many women who can leave Jody Swallow behind in a swim. She's taken almost 30 seconds out of her on that first loop. She's aiming for a top 10 today. She's got the top spot at the moment. This group of five, we've got Jody Swallow, as you would expect. Alicia Kay is there. Daniela Reef is there for Switzerland. Certainly one of the favorites today. Meredith Kessler, good start from her. Helen Fredriksson of Denmark. The Dane, so good at this middle to long distance triathlon. The pace being pushed. We've got a group of what, 14, 15 men going round the boy. Some of them going under it. Now that's a good tactic, provided you uh, avoid the anchor chain. Couldn't quite tell who it was, but certainly it was someone without their swimming cap on. And still Andy Potts with a slight lead as they come in, a man who's won the Alcatraz Triathlon on no less than six occasions. And he's certainly one of the most versatile of the American triathletes on tour. Now remember, as they come into T1, they need to be quick onto the bike, but there is no drafting permitted, and a 20-metre drafting rule will be applied today. That suits those who are strong on the bike, and it suits those who are good at the swim because they don't lose their advantage. Well, nothing really to separate the leaders. We'll see who's quickest through transition. You can't afford a mistake. I know the distances are huge and they're going to be racing for over three and a half hours. Gomez up there in second or third position for Spain. Away he goes. Andy Potts first onto the bike in the black. Gomez in the red of Spain. Then we've got Manuel Kuhn there as well, who's had a very good swim and an efficient T1. Well, let's have a look at the swimming splits. What a great performance by Andy Potts and, of course, Pete Jacobs, who was the Kona champion back in 2012. Manuel Kung, as we know, has had a good start. Gomez efficient through the transition area, as also, always. And Michael Murphy, Terenzo Pozzone of New Zealand up there as well. And Rasmus Petraeus also with an encouraging start here in Dubai. Number eight, Javier Gomez sets the... Uh, power meter on the bike he'll know exactly what wattage he wants to be pushing throughout the 90 kilometers and he's going to be a tough man to stay with but what sort of pace will Gomez set early on well not quite as quick as Manuel Kung who's gone off like a whipping that's a very positive start indeed and uh, Potts pushing hard in the early stages 90 kilometers there'll be a lot of headwind there'll be a lot of heat some that won't be a problem. 
For others like David McNamee, who does a lot of his training in Scotland, it might be an issue. But ask many triathletes the best thing about their sport, they'll say uh, you get 12 months of summer as you chase the good weather around the globe. Some for training, some for racing. And the reason we've got such a good field here, certainly the venue is spectacular, but the prize money is, uh, I dare say, the greatest draw. $65,000 for the winner today, but with such a strong field, it's impossible to pick a winner at this stage. Welcome back to Challenge Dubai, the first of three events in the Triple Crown, Dubai, Amman, Bahrain. And for anyone, if anyone can win all three, there's a bonus of a million dollars on offer. Triathlon has hit the big time. Manuel Kung, lying in third place at the moment in the men's event, will perhaps not have that on his mind at the moment. He's really just got to focus on pacing. Well, as the men head out on the bike ride, the women coming in to T1, or the women, because Lauren Brandon has had a sensational swim. Well, she's been sighting every two to three strokes, so she's not found it easy out there, but she is clearly broken away from the rest of the field. And I would predict that she's got a margin of, of at least a minute over her nearest rival. There's a group of five women swimming well together but Brandon has stolen the show here on the first phase of this Challenge Dubai triathlon. Quickly into transition, finding the kid is never the easiest bit, but she's well organized, straight onto the bike and away. Well, she came here just wanting a top 10. I wonder whether she'll reconsider those goals and change them as the race goes on, but she, she'll be getting information from her fans. Well, here's uh, a woman that many expected to be out of the water first, Jodie Swallow, seldom beaten into second place. She's had a good swim, there's no doubt about that. The girlfriend of James Kanama, and spending a lot of her time in South Africa. Be interesting to see how she goes at the rest of the race. The bike ride is uh, one of her strong points. The run generally, generally where she gets let down. Also coming out, uh, we've got Alicia Key. Reef is there for Switzerland. Kessler, Fredrickson, Annabelle Luxford is there. Very, very tight in that chasing group. The most important thing here is to get a decent transition and not lose any ground to your rivals through this phase. Now, the split times, 23.19 for Lauren Brandon. That's a, a brilliant swim. Remember, it's 1,900 metres in rough conditions, uh, averaging just over 115, 120 for each 100 metres. Jody Swallow, Luxford, Kessler, as we said, over a minute behind. And Swallow, 118 the margin between herself and the race leader. Back to the men's race, and Javier Gomez pushing hard. This is the number one. Raylak going past him, the winner of Challenge Bahrain at the end of last year. So he's starting hard on the bike. Gomez just uh, getting some fuel on board, pushing a high cadence at the moment. So that's something you might notice about the triathletes, the Olympic distance athletes with a much higher cadence than you'll see from the 70.3 and the full Ironmen. 34-year-old Michael Raylak looking good. Bahrain was December last year and now we are February and between December and February there's always a little break so and it's early the season and I'm not sure if I'm in a good shape but yeah I'm looking forward for Friday. I reckon it becomes a race between the Europeans and the Australians because the Australians got their summer right now and their season and the Europeans are still in the winter mode or maybe Christmas winter mode with a lot of chocolate. And I reckon it becomes a fast course. It doesn't mean it's an easy course. I reckon it's even harder because you have to push all the time on the bike and even on the run. But I reckon we see a fast race. Triathlon is getting more popular and with Challenge we have a high standard. So it's good for sports and I'm, I love triathlon. I'm doing triathlon and I always love if uh, triathlon is uh, get developed and more and more popular. And so I see it with bright eyes. 
we'll see how he gets on. Certainly, he's uh, focused some of his training on this event. He'd love to get another big payday like he did at the end of last year. The German's good on these sort of distances as well. And Raylott's a strong runner, so if he's there or thereabouts at the end of the bike ride, it could be his day. Well, there you see the fast expanse of roadways they'll be racing on and on the right-hand side of the athletes as they make their way along this road. Maidan Racecourse, a spectacular venue. And plenty of other developments, but at no stage will they be out of sight of the top of the Khalifa Tower. Over 800 metres high, by far and away the world's tallest building. start from Benjamin Collins 22 26 in the water he was 11th out of the water and uh, only lost four or five seconds to the quickest so he'll be encouraged by progress so far it's gone past Andy Potts who was first out alongside Pete Jacobs and now we get our first shot of the leading woman Lauren Brandon now, she was saying she had two problems. One is she's left her power meter at home, so she's no idea of what wattage she's pushing. And also she's got a crack of the seat stay, which she just hopes holds out until the end of the 90 kilometers. That would be a bit of a shock if it breaks. But if she stays smooth, there are one or two speed bumps, so she needs to be aware of those. But Brandon having a really good start here and a minute 17 clear of everyone. Here's Michael Raylott again. Now ups the tempo a little bit alongside Manuel Kung of Switzerland. Another good all-rounder. Kung doesn't really have any weaknesses and Raylott will be well aware of that. Kung just having to drop back 20 metres. Uh, applying the rules, just moves out to the side so he can't be accused of drafting. But I don't think he's had too much trouble dropping back because Raylott's going through a good patch at the moment. Javier Gomez use, losing yet another place. It's an uncharacteristic start for Gomez, certainly not the form we saw from him in the 70.3 World Championships last year, an event that he won comfortably. This is Martin Jensen of Denmark, 15th out of the water. This man's been preparing since November for this race and has just come back from a couple of weeks in Phuket just to get himself acclimatised to these sort of conditions. So watch out for Martin Jensen. Certainly, he's the fastest on the bike so far. Nice steady pace. Great position, but he's got to stay in that position for well over two hours. Expecting average speeds in excess of 43 kilometers an hour. And if they go 45, then we're going to see a two hour split for the 90 kilometer distance. I think that's pushing our luck a little bit, especially with these windy conditions. Raylett made to look slow by Jensen, who's started hard. Still a long, long way to go. High cadence, good position, but looks totally relaxed. A really impressive start from this man, and he's made these events his priority. Well, if he wins today, he's going to have to make sure he peaks again in August and again in December. Oman in uh, August, Challenge Oman August, and then Challenge Bahrain in December. Raylott pushing a cadence of something like 95, 96, but coming up on Andy Potts is Terenzo Bazzone of New Zealand and he is flying at the moment. Two weeks training in Fuerteventura to get used to this and he looks in very good shape indeed. The golden boy from New Zealand. He had a pretty troubled year last year. Injuries and bad luck put him out of contention in a lot of events, but he looks in good shape here. The good thing about, about the racing here is the, the 20 metre draft rule and I think that's that's going to split the men's field up uh, a lot more than, than most other races where, where groups do do form and you do get a slight advantage from that 10, 12 metre drafting zone. Uh, so so here with 20 metre draft zone as in Challenge Bahrain in December last year, you saw the, the bike really split up and 
And I think that's important for, for triathlon, especially when so much money is on the line. It's, it's important for, for us athletes to be able to race a swim, race a bike and race a run. And, and uh, whoever is the strongest over all three disciplines on the day is, is the crown champion. I think uh, the, the trials and tribulations I've gone through the past, past little while definitely have moulded me into the person I am. And hopefully 2015 is going to be a big year for me. I'm really looking forward to being part of the Nassar uh, Triple Crown. And, it's, uh, it's great to be here in Dubai, first time racing in Dubai, first time racing in the Middle East and uh, we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just be out there trying to, trying to be a part of the action and, and I'm just, yeah, just looking forward to helping put on a great show. Bazzoni certainly part of the action at the moment, as are all the age groupers who've got involved today. Over 950 athletes in all racing here in Dubai and two in particular who stick out. The Crown Prince of Bahrain, Prince Nasser here, swimming and towing Ghanim Mohammed Al Mufta, a little boy who suffers from caudal regression syndrome, which means the lower part of his spine hasn't developed. He desperately wanted to ride a horse, so the Prince took him to his stables and gave him that experience. And then he dreamt of doing a triathlon, a full long distance triathlon. And so the Prince took him up on that challenge as well. And here they are together, a phenomenal inspiration to so many people and don't underestimate the challenge that the Prince has given himself because this sort of race is hard enough on your own so all credit to him and we'll see how they get on throughout the day Here we are with Terenzo Bazzone leading the chase group here in Challenge Dubai. Now, we haven't had any split times on Bazzone, so that must mean that his transponder has come off and he must have lost it in the swim. So they'll want to get another one on him in T2, certainly, so we can track him over the run. Now, let's have a look at the map of the cycle route. 90 kilometers in all, one or two roundabouts to negotiate, otherwise long, straight, fast roads. Only 60 meters gained in the first 60 kilometer. So uh, although the you could describe the first 60 k's as uphill, I don't think they'll notice. And the descent down towards the finish is going to be very quick indeed. Still looking comfortable. This is Martin Jensen who is leading the way and he's made a significant break over Bazzone. He's been pushing the pace all along, training in Club La Santa, then he went cross-country skiing for a couple of weeks just to get the cardiovascular system sorted out, then back to Club La Santa with Camilla Pedersen of Denmark, and then, of course, that last couple of weeks in Phuket. He has taken his preparation very seriously indeed. Off the roundabout, first right, as is correct. And now he should double back on himself. And there he goes. So Jensen passes the halfway marker. Now, no sign of Bazzoni, Rayla, Kung, Collins. And I'm suspecting, as we're seeing here with Andy Potts, that they have done the U-turn on the first roundabout, not the second one and in which case they've cut the course short by just over a kilometer. Now it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. In their defense, the marker, the course markers have been blown over in the very strong gusts of winds that have blown. So a little bit of confusion. And the man who's going to struggle with it is Martin Jensen of Denmark, who's suddenly going to find himself coming up behind men that he's already overtaken. That is going to take a strong, strong mind. Now. Are they going to be disqualified? I suspect that with the absence of the road markers, there will just be a time penalty added on. It is only just over a kilometre after all. We will see, and I think, uh, I think the officials will be aware of it very soon, and hopefully we'll get a decision before the end of the race. But five of the big names have uh, cut the course a little bit short here. Number three, that's Tim Reid of Australia. He's gone the right way. That will be a little bit of a relief to his training team.
I've been fortunate to have raced challenge events for quite a while now. They're such a well-respected brand of racing and you know these guys put on phenomenal races and the pros are, are getting an opportunity that you know we couldn't have hoped for five years ago so it's, it's amazing. I think the Australians are really at an advantage for this series because we're training through summer when we come here. So typically I'd have a bigger break over Christmas and, and start building up for the June, July uh, US races. But now I'm just actually focused for peaking right now, which is, which is great given the Australian summer's on. Training's been good, feeling fit. And uh, you know, I think it's like anyone to win. You, you can't have an off day with a, with a field like this and uh, I'll have to be 100% firing to, to get a win. Joe Gambles, 50 seconds off the pace, out of the water, and he pushed a phenomenal pace early on, 47 kilometres an hour over the first 30 k's, and uh, looks to have slowed a little as Tim Reed goes past him. Tim Reed on the podium in Challenge Bahrain, so we know that he's dangerous. Here is Lauren Brandon still leading the way in the women's race. Daniela Reef is going strongly for Switzerland. Vertel and Swallow a fairly evenly matched. And Hella Fredriksson of Denmark up in the leading four in the women's race. But Brandon still out in front. I think she can hardly believe it herself. Maybe she should never race with a power meter. She is pushing her best bike ride that we've seen for a long, long time. In the men's race, Terenzo Bazzoni finds himself in the lead for the second time today after that little shortcut. Well, he's, he won't be aware of it at the moment. He might be when this man catches him up for the second time. Martin Jensen flying past Michael Raylett again. Just a little turn of the head and a shake of the head from Jensen. He's on fabulous form at the moment. Maybe everyone's going to start going to Phuket for their race preparation. Bozzoni still focused, brilliant junior. And this man is on the chase, moving up into second place now. So he's overtaken four of the men that got ahead of him at the halfway stage of this bike ride. And Jensen still looking strong. Will he be able to ride? Now, there's no doubt uh, that he's just passing a message over and explaining what's happened. Well, that's fair enough. You can't blame him. Now he needs to put it out of his mind and just focus on his pace and prepare himself for the run still to come. 21.1 kilometers to run along the Arabian Gulf. It's a very, very tough run, particularly because of the wind today. Kilometers one to five will be into the wind, and then from 10 to 15 are gonna be into a stiff headwind as well. But who is gonna hit T2 first? Bozzone still out front. Jensen closing him down once again. Manuel Kung is going well in third place. Raylott, the champion from Bahrain in fourth place. Only a minute or so off the pace of the leaders. And for the first time, for the first time, we get to see Daniela Reef of Switzerland, the 27-year-old from Rummelsburg, who's having a very good ride, closing down eventually on Lauren Brandon, who was the first out of the water. Now, Reef said she wasn't in her best form when she arrived here in Dubai, but my goodness, she's put in a very, very strong bike ride so far. The 2014 70.3 world champion, certainly looking for this Dubai title and has been encouraged by coach Brett Sutton to take part here. It's a tough field. I mean, I think the win can be between 10 girls uh, or even more. For us, it's a job, and, but we do it with passion and um, to actually build, give this to other people to actually exercise and go out there and train. And I think that feeling of fitness should be more, you know, should be pushed. And I think that's, that's what Triathlon stands for as well. Not only performance and, you know, winning and money, but it's also fitness. It's my first race for the, uh, in the Challenge family. I think I've only heard really good things. I didn't want to stay at home because it's pretty cold at home in Switzerland right now. So I, I went here really early. The hospitality, hospitality has been great to, um, 
the very you know very warm welcome from from uh, the people here and the hotel is great the venue is really really beautiful and um, yeah the, the the course too I mean I think it's a great race venue and it will look pretty cool I'm excited. Reef, of course, second in Kona last year, gave Amanda Carfre a really good run for her money. So she can go the distance, we know that. But this is her first race of 2015. So I guess there's always a little bit of unknown when you haven't got those race legs on. But she's going well and finally catching up with Lauren Brandon, who led for so long on the bike. Leading men now approaching the second transition. And it's almost certainly going to be Terenzo Pozzone who's first in. He's got the road to himself, but not far behind is Martin Jensen. Manuel Kung only 10 seconds or so behind Jensen, so we could well have three men coming out of the transition together. On the other hand, if Pozzone can get a good transition, he could find himself 100 metres or so clear at the start of the half marathon run. Jensen still focused, he's worked hard. But it is Bazzoni approaching the transition, a sharp left-hand turn here. Always a little nerve-wracking when you're the first athlete in. Are the officials ready? Are they going to show you exactly where to go? It's not easy to think straight when you've been pushing the pace for almost two and a half hours. 22 minutes in the water, just over two hours on the bike. And he's still got an hour and a quarter or so to go on the run. Bazzone, he's a, a remarkable athlete. World champion junior duathlon, world champion junior triathlon as well. Multi-sports athlete at school. The alchemist, they called him for a while. Every race he entered, he came away with gold. So just staying calm. Now, being handed his bag, and the reason for that is because he's lost his transponder. No one else uh, is going get, to get quite such treatment, but... They need to get that transponder back on to Pozzoni so they can track him over the run. And away he goes. Look at that left uh, ankle. That's what's been missing for the last two and a half hours. And almost immediately into his stride. Checks the watch. And he'll know now exactly when he's due to finish. He's capable of 1.13. If he does a 1.13 here, he should be able to secure the victory and take home a check of $65,000 but we're still waiting to hear what the penalty will be for that little section of the course that Bazzone and four others missed earlier on today. Jensen, Kung has just gone through the transition as well. Raylet for Germany coming in in fourth place. And Raylet at 2.28.23, so he's uh, just over one and a half minutes behind Bazzone of New Zealand. Now, Pozzone, 2.26.55 on the bike. Jensen, 2.26.58. And that four-minute sign is the penalty that has been added. So now we know four minutes added to the time of the five men that missed that one-kilometre section. So that's a pretty stiff penalty, but they can consider themselves lucky because in most races, it would have been automatic disqualification. Well, that means that Pozzone is still in the money for the win here, and he's still in the money for the $1 million bonus if he can win today, and he can win the other two Triple Crown events in Oman, and of course, Bahrain in December. Well, the running course takes them along the coast of the Arabian Gulf, and two loops of 10 and a half kilometers, just over to make up the 21.1. And as I say, as they disappear from the transition area they go straight into the wind they'll enjoy running back towards the finish and the transition well here is Bazzone a man who has 22 national titles to his name in cross-country running in cycling in swimming you name it he can do it and he's certainly doing it here today a man who was born in South Africa incidentally 
now 30 years old and looking very strong. The 2008, uh, 2008 Ironman 70.3 champion. Raylett, along with his brother Andreas, a very accomplished triathlete, and he's not having any trouble at all going past Martin Jensen. But Jensen, remember, has a four-minute advantage over Raylett, so Raylett has got to push if he wants to beat the day. Raylett, one of those five who went wrong on the course, and we now know the four-minute penalty has been applied. The first woman in, it is, of course, Switzerland's Daniela Reef. Well, she looks full of running. Good solid bike ride from her. We should get the splits, but my estimation is that she's just over two hours 45 out on the bike. Compare that to the fastest time in the men's 2.26.55. Bag number 77. Well, this is just what you don't want. And she's just got to stay calm. Easier said than done. But seconds, 5, 10, 15, thrown away. Well, she's got such a good lead, it's not going to matter on this occasion. But had it been closer, that would have been uh, a disaster for Daniela Reef. Well, there you have it, 2.45.54 Reef's time. Jody Swallow, 2.49. We've got Heather Wertel, 2.49.07. Fredriksen of Denmark, 2.50.48. All impressive times, but what can Jody Swallow do now? She's done her two best disciplines. Now she's got to survive the run. She's strong. We saw her race in Alpe d'Huez a few years back, and she led from start to finish. Today, she was not first out of the water. That's something she won't be used to. And she's got the company of the six foot two inch Heather Wertel from Canada just behind her. Hella Fredrickson's not far off the pace either. Very experienced, 34 years old now. We saw her in London in the Olympic Games in 2012. She's been a pro since 2008 and surviving very well under the guidance of Joel Filiol. There's Lauren Brandon, fifth into the transition area. Another little mistake. She lost a lot of time at the end of the bike ride, but it was a great effort from the woman who was first out of the water. Alicia Kay throwing away precious seconds. That can easily be trained the night before. And Meredith Kessler showing her exactly how it should be done. The first six women are through the transition and they are all chasing Daniela Reef of Switzerland. They've got 21.1 kilometers to make their mark. Well, welcome back to Challenge Dubai. The men at the halfway stage of the final stage of this epic triathlon. They've reached the 10 and a half kilometer stage and Terenzo Fazzone of New Zealand still leading the way, comfortably so, looks strong out on the road. Chased down by Michael Rayla, who's made good ground, made a couple of places. And of course, in third place at the moment, Martin Jensen of Denmark. But Jensen certainly looking tired last time we saw them. Fazzone, very keen to run on that little strip in between the two footpaths. It's smoother, obviously feels a little bit faster. Jensen looking at his watch, a telling sign, no doubt, that he's longing for this race to be over. He's worked so hard on the bike. Now, he does get a four-minute advantage compared to Bazzone. And, of course, Michael Raylett, who was one of the five that cut the cycle course short. But that's not going to be enough to put him into top spot at the moment. He needs to accelerate if he's going to win this one. Jody Swallow, likewise, if she's going to win the women's, I can't see it happening now. Daniela Reef out in front in the women's event, looking very strong. Wattel of Canada also going well. Helen Fredrickson is running well. Swallow, a strong, strong athlete. Another who's been coached by Brett Sutton. This is Wattel, part of the part of Team Wertel with uh, her husband Trevor and they sold up everything to get themselves a, a camper van quite a posh one by the way and ever since they did that they've been producing some very good results around the world the age group is still out on the roads including the 
Crown Prince of Bahrain, Prince Nasser, who is with his companion, Ghanim Mohammed Al Mufta, a young lad suffering from caudal regression syndrome. And both of these two making a name for themselves today. It's not about winning, it's about completing. And if they do that, they will have won. I'm Ghan Mohamed Al Mufta. I'm from Qatar. I'm 12 years old. First of all, Ghanem is a very, very inspirational kid. He inspired a lot of kids, but not only kids, I mean everyone in our countries, especially in the GCC. He inspires many. So when I saw him, you know, I, I got really, really, uh, I mean, I really liked his, uh, his positiveness about life and how to, to make the most out of it. And one of his dreams was to ride a horse. So I invited him to my uh, stables and we both rode a horse together. And then after riding a horse, he immediately escalated his, uh, his, his dream up very, very high to do a long distance triathlon. It's, uh, it's uh, spreading peace and love and uh, making uh, kids dream true. And we're traveling all the world to make... Uh, to make kids inspired? I mean, and also uh, positive uh, adventures as well. So he wants to be an adventurous kid and makes people also to go through adventures. One thing I'm worried about, he's going to talk so much and I'm gonna, I want to focus so much, but I don't know how we'll deal with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely sure that I'm going to 100% enjoy it more than he does. I know that he will enjoy it and uh, I hope that we both uh, going to laugh and talk together and uh, have a great time. And he's uh, coming up with tactics, uh, so I hope we both win. <laughs> no doubt that Ghanim will remember this day for the rest of his life and what is life without dreams a very inspirational story indeed this is Michael Rayler currently lying in second place and into the closing stages of this triathlon he's running out of ground if he's going to catch Torrento Bazzone but to be honest the New Zealand are running brilliantly well still pulling away from the German and looks nailed on to get the win here Rayla does need to be concerned about Jensen of Denmark and, of course, Tim Reid of Australia, both of whom will be free of that four-minute penalty, having taken the right course on the run. This is Bazzone. He will get a four-minute penalty, but he's four and a half minutes clear by my calculation, so it's going to be tight. But I think he is running in to take the title here in Dubai. It's been an impeccable performance. Great swimming early on. He was in that main group, only lost five or six seconds to some of the best swimming triathletes in the world. Watch the clock, 3.41, 3.41.44, the winning time here in Dubai. A lot of work, many, many hours work, a huge amount of investment, and it's paid off today. $65,000 better off. And if he can win in Amman and he can win in Bahrain this year, he could be on for that $1 million bonus. Michael Rayleigh comes in in second, 342.50. And that means that Tim Reid or Martin Jensen have got to finish in 346.50 if they want to beat Rayleigh. Manuel Kung should be the next man across the line, but he's part of that famous five who took the wrong course, so four minutes added to his time. So effectively, 3.49.38. And he's got a little issue. He's got a real problem with the hamstring that seems to have gone into spasm. Well, no wonder there's a little cramp around. Now, here comes Tim Reid, who was needing to finish under 3.46.50, and he's comfortably inside. Reid is the runner-up here in Dubai. He takes second prize of $35,000. My goodness, that's a real bonus for him and his training for the season. And just coming in behind him, Martin Jensen of Denmark, who pushed so hard on the bike. 
Now, he's had injuries uh, recently. He's had Achilles problems, but it looks as though that's one of uh, the thigh muscles that's giving him trouble at the moment. We'll hear more about that later. Here is uh, Reef of Switzerland. She looks as though she's run about five metres. She's looking so fresh. I guess when you know you've won it, it feels easy. The pain will come tomorrow. Reef, an astonishing woman. She won her first ever Ironman event the day after winning a 51-50. That's the sort of woman she is. Phenomenal stamina. And today she's proved she can cope with a win, she can cope with a heat. And she takes the win. 4.09, the winning time of the women's event. She was in second place for much of the bike ride, but eventually, eventually got past Lauren Brandon. And now she is the Challenge Dubai champion. Good second place for Heather Wertel of Canada. She'll be delighted with that. And certainly with $35,000, she'll be able to upgrade that camper van and travel in a little more luxury over the next few months. And Fredriksen of Denmark, winning in Bahrain last December, on the podium again here in Dubai. So let's confirm the top five in the women's event. Reef, Wertel, Fredriksen and Swallow ahead of Annabelle Luxford. And in the men's, Terenzo Bozzone, his second race of 2015, his first win. Tim Reed in second, Michael Rayland of Germany in third. Terenzo won. I tried my best. He was the best athlete, actually, in the end. He put such a strong performance the whole day. And when I saw Terenzo, I looked in his face, and I saw that he is going for the win. He's not. He doesn't, he doesn't want to become second, and if you see someone has this mind, it's so hard to beat. And maybe it's maybe different if Torenzo got afraid of me, but he was he was too strong even in his head and the champion today. I mean, getting getting into the water, I I knew uh, Kiwis and Aussies were, were real good at open water, and, and when the conditions are rough, we we excel. But I think with so many Aussies and. Uh, there's so many strong swimmers in the group. I, I found myself in the middle of the pack and having to play catch up for the first 20, 30 kilometers of the bike. But I just felt great. My legs, my legs were there, and uh, this is my first first proper race in 70.3 World Champs, and, and I wasn't sure where my body would be. So I just responded the whole day, and uh, whenever I asked it to give me a little more, it, it, uh, it gave me some more, and this is awesome. This morning it was kind of like, oh, look at the waves and the wind, but generally tough conditions suit me, you know. I feel like it makes for a really fair race and for sort of a strong person's race, and that's my style. Um, so, yeah, I was just really happy with the day all around. I'm very glad with my swim today. It was really hard out there. It was really choppy, and um, and then on the bike, I, I was struggling in the start. Um, Chody and the girls were working really hard, so I actually couldn't keep up the pace. So I had to drop and I was a bit frustrated, but I just tried to focus on my uh, pace and um, I knew if I can keep the pace, I'll be, I'll be okay. So I just focused on my pace and um, yeah, I was glad I was uh, still able to, you know, come, come first. The inaugural Challenge Dubai and the first phase of the Triple Crown, a massive success. Reef and Bazzone remain in the running for the $1 million bonus. There is no doubt we'll see them and many others in Amman and Bahrain.